Imagine that NASA finally built a spaceship that will take us to the stars. What would happen as the astronauts attempted to cross the boundary of the solar system? Would they speed up? Would they slow down? Would they ever make it to their destination? The Pioneer 10 and 11 were launched in the early 70s to explore diverse aspects of the solar system, specifically Jupiter and Saturn. They then continued their respective journeys towards the edge of the solar system. However, by 1980, mission controllers became aware that the probes were unexpectedly slowing down. Twenty years later, the probes were some 300,000 kilometers short of where they were supposed to be according to precise calculations. That's the distance between the Earth and the Moon. Tiny on a cosmic scale, but measurable. The probes were decelerating towards the Sun, a phenomenon known today as the Pioneer Anomaly. A similar phenomenon was observed in the Galileo, Ulysses, and Cassini probes. What physical entity came in contact with the probes? What caused them to slow down? Was the sun raining them in somehow? Or was it that Newton and Einstein's equations were wrong? Was there some new physics to be discovered? Mission controllers decided to evaluate the data that they collected for over 20 years, and in 2012 boldly proclaimed to the world that the mystery had finally been solved. They argued that due to the irregular shape of the pioneers, the radioisotope thermoelectric generators that power them were releasing more heat in the direction of travel. It was this asymmetric heat emission that was slowing the probes down. Of course, skeptics were left wondering whether this was just another case where the wolves are guarding the sheep. The individuals who published this report were the same people who ran the mission. And there is a human tendency in such situations to make the data fit the preconceived theories. Were the triumphant researchers, perchance, merely rubber stamping their foregone conclusions? A common objection often raised by the critics, including some of the people who ran the missions, is that heat dissipation had been considered from the start and rejected for diverse reasons. It was just a bit too coincidental, too ad hoc, that all these pros were dissipating their heat away from the sun at a constant rate, even while the pros were running out of energy. However, the same critics stopped short of the unthinkable, declaring that Newton and Einstein's equations needed mending. Newton's equation had been used now for 400 years. It faithfully describes gravitational phenomena. NASA mathematicians use it regularly and depend on it to calculate the trajectories of the probes they are going to send off into space. Einstein's equations are even more accurate in describing, for instance, the orbit of Mercury. However, they are more difficult to use and the extra precision they offer over Newton's simpler equation is not worth the trouble for the mathematicians. Skeptics were simply unwilling to accept that these thoroughly tested equations were wrong or incomplete. Yet both Newton and Einstein are off the mark on the pioneers. Newton's universal law is an inverse square of the distance equation. According to Newton, the sun's gravitational strength diminishes the farther you are from it. Gravitational strength extends to your spaceship like a cone. If the nearest star, Proxima Centauri, were as near the sun as is the Earth, 
We can conceive of the gravitational force to have the square of the distance cone shape. However, Proxima Centauri is 4.3 light years away. If we could travel at the speed of light, we would reach Proxima in 4.3 years one way and about 9 years round trip. Why would the sun's gravitational strength extend as the square of the distance all the way to Proxima? What physical entity compels the gravitational field to be shaped like a cone? What invisible entity mediates gravity? Well, you may not agree with the rope model of light and gravity, but nobody can deny that it is new physics. Mathematical physics champions the particle hypothesis. It proposes that all matter is ultimately comprised of tiny independent islands, whether it is light, gravity, electricity, or magnetism, all invisible phenomena are modeled with and mediated by discrete particles. A fatal shortcoming of the particle hypothesis is that it cannot explain the force of pull. How does a discrete particle pull on another one? The physics frequently asked questions site at the University of Riverside proposes a mechanism the mathematicians call negative momentum transfer. A particle pitches a particle that contains negative motion at another particle, and the target particle moves closer to the source. This amusing explanation is a patently ad hoc mathematical sleight of hand. The mathematicians merely change the sign from positive to negative to make the magic happen on paper. The trick is to produce this magic in the lab. But let's concede negative momentum transfer for the sake of argument. If gravity is mediated by discrete particles, why would they mold gravity into a cone? If we are to explain action at a distance phenomena, such as entanglement, or Mach's principle, or the attraction between two particles, we must invariably introduce an extended mediator. Otherwise, the proponent is by default explaining his theory with magic. He is filling in the space between objects with spirits. Action at a distance can only be mediated by extended objects. Therefore, in contrast to the discrete particle hypothesis of mathematical physics, the rope hypothesis proposes that all atoms are interconnected. The invisible mediator between any two atoms is the electromagnetic rope, a pair of twined DNA-like threads. The rope model unifies light and gravity. We have push and pull mediated by a single entity. We can now rationalize why the Earth does not fly out of the solar system. Every atom that constitutes our planet is bound to every atom that comprises the sun. We can also understand why stars are not flung out of the galaxies. All the atoms that comprise a star are connected to all others. Indeed, a recent article described cosmic filaments as massive strands which stretch like spider webs across the observable universe. This is a description of the rope model. The universe is an interconnected web. The electromagnetic ropes are the threads that make up this spider nest. Hopefully, if filaments are continuous structures, they are mediated by elongated entities. So what happens when a comet approaches the solar system, for instance? We propose that the ropes that connect each of the atoms of the comet to each of the atoms comprising the sun fan out and tug independently. There is a different tension between the sun and the comet at each location, a notion that the mathematicians refer to as field, a potential at each point in space. 
The more independent ropes that converge upon an atom, the closer it is to the sun, and the faster it travels. Conversely, the farther the comet is from the sun, more and more ropes merge and act as one. We now have a physical interpretation of the invisible square of the distance mechanism that underlies gravity. At some distance, the ropes form a straight coaxial of sorts that extends all the way to the nearest star, Proxima Centauri. These coaxials extend from the sun to every star comprising the Milky Way galaxy. It is these coaxials that underlie Mach's principle. And it is these coaxials that maintain the integrity of a galaxy. It is not an abstract mathematical concept called mass that keeps a galaxy together. In physics, we can only consider physical mediators. The action at a distance phenomenon we know as gravity must be mediated by extended entities. Otherwise, we are in effect doing black magic. We are filling in the blanks with spirits. Near the sun, where the electromagnetic ropes fan out, they form a cone-shaped bird's beak. It is in this region where Newton's universal equation is quite accurate. Farther away from the sun, where the ropes merge and form the coaxial, we enter the linear region. The linear region extends for most of the way to Proxima, where the ropes again spread out and form the cone-shaped bird's beak. There is no gravity, no acceleration in the linear regime. The familiar cone-shaped square of the distance acceleration that we experience every day is absent in this region, in either direction. Therefore, when Pioneer 10 crossed from the Newtonian bird's beak and entered the linear regime, it slowed down. If ever a group of astronauts attempted to travel to Proxima, they would experience a similar deceleration. The astronauts would be drifting through countless ropes that form the coaxial in the linear regime. The ropes binding the atoms of the astronauts and their spaceship to those of Proxima would not converge upon them in the familiar square of the distance cone shape but rather straight into them. The ship would drift for eons along the linear regime until it reached its destination. So yes, let there be no doubt, what NASA mission controller stumbled upon is new physics. It is known as the rope hypothesis. Until astronomers and theorists come to terms with the fact that all matter in the universe is interconnected, they will not be able to make sense of how this universe works. <laughs>